Welcome to our channel Sankalp Study Success. Today we are going to see about the most important topic which is introduction to congruencies. So congruencies was introduced and developed by a German mathematician Karl Friedrich Koss. He was the mathematician who developed congruencies. So we denote congruencies by this symbol. Symbol of congruency is this one. Okay. Now coming to the definition part. Here we have A is congruent to B modulo M. That means here A and B are the, are the integers and M is a positive integer. And A is congruent to B modulo M such that M divides A minus B. Then you can say that A is congruent to B modulo M. Let us see here once. If A and B are integers and M is a positive integer, A is said to be congruent to B when M divides A minus B or you can also say that A minus B is a multiple of M. See here, M by A minus B. If it divides, then you can say that A is congruent to B modulo M. Okay, so here, if this is true, then this is called as modulus of the congruence. And here this B is known as residue of A modulo M. That means you can also take it as a reminder part as well. Here if A is not congruent to B modulo M. Then you can say that it is incongruent. If it is incongruent that means M is not dividing A minus B. If it is not dividing a minus b then you can say that a is not congruent to b modulo m so let us take few examples so that we can understand much clear which is 5 by 23 minus 3 it is one of the example from here you can write the values of a b and m so we know that it is of the form m by a minus b so what is the value of a which is 23 and the b value is 3 and m value is 5. So, according to our formula, a is congruent to b modulo m, which is 23 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. Let us check whether it is congruent or incongruent. How can we check it? We can write it as 23, sorry, which is 5 by 23 minus 3. That is 5 by 20. Here m divides a minus b. That means the given equation which we have written 23 is congruent to 3 modulo 5 is true. And 5 is the residue modulus of congruent. Okay. So let us take one more example. So that will become perfect with this. Which is the second one. 16 by 28 minus of minus 4. So from this we can write the values of a, b and m right. a is 28, b is minus 4 and m is 16. So from the formula which we have a is congruent to b modulo m. We can write it as 28 is congruent to minus 4 modulo 16. So let us check whether it is true or not. That means whether it is congruent or incongruent. 28 by, I'm sorry, which is 16 by 28 minus of minus 4. That means what? 16 by 32, correct? Because 28 plus 4 is 32. So, 16 divides 32. That means we can say that 28 is congruent to minus 4 modulus 16. That is true. So, let us take one more example which is incongruent. Till now we have seen all congruent examples. So, let us see one of the incongruent example which is 5 by 20 minus 3. From here we can write the values of a, b and m as a is 20, b is 3 and m is 5. Yeah. Now, from the formula which we have a is congruent to b modulo m. By substituting all these values here, 20 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. So let us check whether it is a congruent or incongruent. How can we check it? 20, uh, sorry, 5 divides 20 minus 3. 
that means what 5 by 18 20 minus 3 is oh which is not 18 which is 17 correct let us write it as 17 here 5 by 17 so 5 will not divide 17 true that means m does not divide divide a minus b that is 17 so we can say that this is incongruent so 23 modulus 23 congruent to 3 modulo 5 that is wrong that is 23 is not congruent to 3 modulo 5 that is incongruent you can also say it as so in this way you have to check whether it is congruent or incongruent now coming to the next one we have an important note here a is congruent to b modulo m then you can write it as a is equals to b plus k here k is some integer z it is belongs to integers now taking this example 23 is congruent to 3 modulo 5 here we can write it as 23 is equals to 3 plus 4 into 5 that means 23 is congruent to 3 modulo 5 you have to find out the k value which is 4 how can you say it is 4 because 4 5s is 20 and if you add it to the add it to 3 you will get it as 23 that means this equation is satisfied if you take the value of k as 4 so it as k is belongs to any integer you can take 4 similarly 49 is equals to minus 5 modulo 6 that means you can write it as 49 is equals to minus 5 plus 6 into 9 because 6 9 so it is 54 minus 5 you will get it as 49 so value of k is 9 here which is also belongs to integer again so in this way if a is congruent to b modulo m you can write it as a is equal to b plus km it is of the form a is equal to b plus km or if you send b to the lhs side then you will get it as a minus b is equals to km where k belongs to integers only so this is the important note which we have and coming to the basic properties of congruence here there are three properties here reflexive property symmetric property and the transitive property here let us see one by one a comma b comma c are the integers which we have we are considering those as integers belongs to z and the first property is the reflexive property which is a is congruent to a modulo m here we have already seen m divides a minus b so in the place of b we have a so we can say that a minus a which is equal to 0 it is divisible by m So we are saying that it is divisible by m that means what a is congruent to a modulo m is true so coming to the proof you can also see here a is congruent to a modulo m that is a minus a is 0 which is divisible by m here that means m by a minus a so you can say that the relation which is there is reflexive by taking one of the example 6 is congruent to 6 modulo 5 that means what 6 minus 6 which is equal to 0 it is divisible by 5 correct so as it is divisible by 5 we can say that the property is reflexive that means 6 is congruent to 2 6 modulo 5 so this is the first property and let us see the second property here which is the symmetric property if a is congruent to b modulo m and then you will get b is also congruent to a modulo 5 so let us take first of all a is congruent to b modulo m let us consider it as equation 1 suppose so you can say that a minus b divides m you can also say that a minus b is a multiple of m true now by taking the second equation b is congruent to a modulo m let us consider it as an equation 2 here you can say that b minus a divides m 
So b minus a divides m. That means what b minus a is also multiple of m. If both are multiple of m, or if both divides m, a minus b and b minus a, then you can say that the given property is a symmetric property, right? Symmetric property. So by taking an example, three is congruent to five modulo two, and you can also take it as five is congruent to three modulo five. Sorry, three modulo two. So, what is the difference you get in these two equations? A and B have interchanged here. That means three minus five, which is minus two, divisible by two, and five minus three, which is two, it is also divisible by two. So, you can say that both the equations are in symmetric. Correct. So. This is the second property which we have that is the symmetric property now coming to the transitive property if a is congruent to b modulo m and b is congruent to c modulo m then what do you get a is congruent to c modulo m that means let us prove here let us consider for the first equation as a is congruent to b modulo m which is the first equation that means from here you can say that a minus b divides m and from the second one b is congruent to c modulo m let us consider it as equation 2 and you can say that b minus c divides m here by combining these two equations you get a minus b plus b minus c that means here if plus b and minus b gets cancelled and you will be remaining with a minus c that means what a minus c also divides m so by combining these two equations you got a minus c divides m how can you write a minus c divides m you can write it as a is congruent to c modulo m correct because from this you can also say a minus c divides m which is again the same statement which we have already got so you can say if a is congruent to b modulo m and b is congruent to c modulo m then you will get a is congruent to c modulo m that is the relation is transitive so this is the transitive property let's take an example for transitive property as well which is 7 is congruent to minus 5 modulo 4 here and also we have to take minus 5 is congruent to 15 modulo 4 see a is congruent to b modulo m and also b is congruent to c modulo m so from here what do you get a is congruent to c modulo m that is a 7 is congruent to 15 modulo 4 true yes 7 is congruent to 15 modulo 4 from the property of transitive property so these are the three properties which we have in basic properties of congruences so let us meet in the next video